The genius of Apple may have started under Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak, but the impact of current CEO Tim Cook is undeniable. Just take a look at the stock price. When Cook took over, his share went for a little over 13 bucks. That has now popped to more than $166 a share, an increase of more than 1,000%. Our next guest got the opportunity to sit down with Mr. Cook for an exclusive interview. Zach Barron, GQ senior staff writer, joining us now. Good to see you, man. So your impressions of sitting down with Tim Cook, your first impression, what surprised you? Well, I think um, you mentioned he's sort of Steve Jobs' successor, right? And so when he starts, I think there was a, a comparison that was frequently made, um, and it wasn't always flattering to Tim. I think, you know, Jobs was seen as this sort of charismatic Steve Jobs-like figure, excuse me, Walt Disney-like figure. And Tim Cook comes from operations. He's thought of as a kind of you know, spreadsheet guy, numbers guy. And the thing that when you sit down with him that you kind of realize is, is that he is kind of an equally, in my opinion, charismatic leader, very fun to be around. He's he's from the South. He's got that courtly manner. And um, I find him very impressive and very likable. And Zach, speaking of that demeanor as something falls in the studio here speaking of that demeanor though what you learned in terms of his leadership because you talked about his calmness how that contrasts to so many of the other leaders out there including zuckerberg including elon musk what was your big takeaway there yeah i think that maybe there was a time where we were like all these guys in silicon valley are here to save us and they're all going to protect us and take care of us and they're all here for the best reasons and i think we've learned as a society that that's not the case. And the thing about Tim that I think is really cool is he is a very even personality. He's a giant company. He Everything he says is listened to very carefully. He's a very influential guy. But unlike some of his peers in Silicon Valley, he's not out here making wild claims about the future or speculative businesses. He is a very steady very grounded person. And I think increasingly in that place, it doesn't feel like there are a lot of adults and Tim is an adult. So of course, Steve Jobs was all about the defining uh, device of our generation, the iPhone. And Cook really has been, services has been his signature. You write though, when it comes to product, there's still the feeling in some quarters that he is one transformative product away from history. What that product is in the end, is endlessly speculated about. Uh, I would argue that AirPods have changed life as much as anything since the iPhone. Do you get a sense what that could be? The VR, AR goggles that have been rumored about for months now, potentially launched in June. Yeah, so people who know Apple will know that Tim Cook is not in the habit of sitting down with journalists and confirming upcoming product releases or service releases or anything they're rolling out. Apple's a very secretive company. That said, those rumors are out there. And we talked about it. I said, okay, look, you're probably not going to confirm this. And he's like, I, I don't know what you're talking about. But I said, okay, let's talk about the potential of VR AR, which is the device you're referring to. The rumor is it's called the Reality Pro. They may or may not be doing it. I cannot confirm. But I asked, why would you be interested in such a thing? And he talked a lot about how the augmented reality capabilities are something that he and Apple are interested in right now. He talked about overlaying the digital realm onto the physical realm. This is a company that's very interested in creativity, very interested in collaboration, very interested in creating stuff. I think that his view is we could have the sort of work days, the creative days that we have now, but better. We could overlay the, the thing that we're working on and both look at it and play with it in the digital realm kind of while being in the physical realm. We could measure something. We could see art on a wall. There's all these sort of capabilities to do work in new ways and to do creative stuff in new ways that AR could allow. So he was like, I'm very interested in this. Are we doing something with it or not? I can't say, but do I think there's a lot of really interesting stuff going on with it? I think he does. 
Well, speaking of products, obviously iPhone, a massive, massive hit, just to put it lightly, for the tech giant. We talk about one of the concerns here, and that is how addicted people are to their phones. I know you talked to him about some of the concerns that you have with your kids watching the screen so often. He said, quote, if you're looking at the phone more than you're looking in somebody's eyes, you're doing the wrong thing. What did you learn just about how we should be using our phone and any advice he gave on how we best regulate it for our children. Yeah, so the first time I interviewed Tim Cook was a few years ago in the deeper pandemic phase. And it was at a moment where I was like very, the conflicted relationship with my iPhone. I was very addicted to it. And I said, what do you do about this? And he was like, well, I hear what you're saying. I turn off all my notifications. I, I suggest you do the same thing. It's very rare that you need to be interrupted did that, it was incredibly helpful. Since that time that we spoke for the story, in between that, in between those two times, I had a kid. My kid is fascinated with my phone. So I went back to him, I was like, you know, he already follows it around the room. My kid wants to play with it, he wants to look at it. What do you suggest? And he was like, gently was like, we have tools to help you. There's screen time, there's parental controls. But more generally, he was like, we make these things to help people create stuff. We make these things to make people's lives better. We don't make these things for you to look at them all the time. We don't like make any more money if you do that. So his primary advice was really like, as a parent, set guardrails on your own. And gently, and then not in a rude way, was kind of like, maybe you shouldn't have your kid, your phone out around your kid all the time, which I thought was like really good advice and was was sort of he had a good perspective on where the, the line of responsibility ended with the device and where it sort of picked up with the parent that maybe I didn't want to hear, but I was it was useful to hear, let's put it that way. Yeah, Zach, I can relate. I have the same exact concerns. I have two young boys, and every time I bring out the phone, they're always trying to see exactly what's on the screen. So some good advice there from Tim Cook. We just got to put it away. Zach Barron, great to have you. GQ, senior writer. Thanks so much.